My name is Cal Stevens, and over the past year, I've been doing research with Georgia Regents University on the topic of MRI scans on children. One fundamental difficulty there is keeping them still for long enough to actually perform the scan. Because as we all know, children love to run around, to move, to just have fun. What they don't love is to lay inside of a loud, dark, claustrophobic tube for five minutes and have to stay perfectly still. That's especially difficult for kids with ADHD, who we specifically want to be able to study. One possible solution is to sedate the kids, but that raises ethical concerns because it's a risky procedure, and it also adds costs to the process, plus it confounds the results by altering their brain activity, and we want that natural brain activity, so sedatives aren't an option. So what has been happening lately in the research world is to acclimate the children to the scanning environment through mock MRI training sessions. In these sessions, usually the kid will lay inside the tube and someone will be watching them and telling them whether or not they're moving too much. But the problem is that is reliant on the technician watching the kids and making sure they're not moving. Now in an MRI, movement on the scale of four millimeters, five millimeters begins to cause serious issues in image clarity. Now the difficulty with the technician just watching the kid is that four millimeters is really difficult to see. So we developed a system to quantify that motion precisely and give exact numbers of how much the kid's moving. And using that, we can keep them within the threshold that we need to have a successful MRI. I knew that, that we could do this for less funding um, than some of the more commer the commercially available products. I had known Cal for about a year and a half. Um, he had done some theoretical physics. I'd been impressed with that. He worked with one of my colleagues, and so when he came to me and he wanted to uh, work on a project, I thought this would be ideal. Um, the project involved a lot of numerical uh, and computational work, um, but also learning how to, to, to use a machine with imaging, and so I knew that he would be a natural at picking up various pieces of code, putting it all together, and he's done a great job with that. After Dr. Hoggart approached me and asked me to take on this project, I set out to do exactly that. Written in Python, the application takes images from the Raspberry Pi camera and analyzes those using an edge detection algorithm and then a method called centroid tracking to track the patient's head as it moves around the frame. And using that with the calibrated scale in terms of pixels per millimeter, we can get exactly how many millimeters the patient has moved throughout the trial. The child's image is on the left side of the screen and the edges of their image is in the center. We use those edges to track the motion of their face around the frame. As you can see, as I move my head around, the edges move and the red dot in the center moves with them. And we use that center dot to graph their motion. We have it related to millimeters. Right now, one pixel of the image is correlated to 1.2 millimeters of actual distance. This is a step up from the previous system. There was a lot that had to come together to get this to work. One big problem that we ran into is because the Raspberry Pi is so inexpensive, so small and lightweight, it lacks a lot of the power required to analyze images. So we really had to scale back the resolution of our images themselves that we analyze. The problems with scaling it down is that our scale in terms of pixels per millimeter is directly related to how many pixels we have. At 100 by 60 pixels, we were getting about four millimeters per pixel. And that's the level of detail that we actually want to be able to stop. So we had to find a way to balance performance and resolution. That was difficult and it required a lot of algorithm optimizations. But over the course of the year, as we fine tuned it, we eventually found that happy medium. And now I do believe we're using a resolution of 200 by 120. And that's how we get our scale of 1.2 millimeters per pixel. Because now the patients can move about three to four pixels relative to the camera before they're moving too much to cause significant issues with the MRI. And we're hoping that that makes it significantly easier to train the kids for these MRIs.